Hello there, my name is David Kidder. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to add power in, an, in a parallel RLC circuit. So I've got three components. I've got an, a purely resistive R circuit, like a heater. I've got a mixed RL circuit, like a motor, it has both R and uh, XL. And I have a capacitive circuit. Um, and so each one of those is gonna give us some form of power, all right? So the resistor gives us true power, which is watts. So it's 1500 watts for a resistive branch. The inductor here has both R and L, so it gives us both power and quadrature power. Power of this coil is going to be 1,000 watts. That's our true power. And the QXL is going to be 3,000 VARs. That's our reactive power. All right? So we can't add those directly up. Now, we have a cap in here as well, Q of XC, and that's 1,500 VARs of reactive power. That's the power being stored in the electric field. Uh, and so what we want to do then is mix these three together and see what the total apparent power of that circuit is. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start with power total. So P total is going to be a combination of all of the watts in the circuit. So we got to look through each branch, 1500 watts here, uh, 1000 watts in our coil. We need to add those directly up. So it doesn't matter if it's series or parallel. If there are watts, we can add them directly. All right, so we've got 2500 watts in total here. All right, so 2,500 watts is always going to be there in this circuit. We can't cancel that out no matter what. If we use power, it is going to be present, and the source is going to have to drive that load. All right, so at that point, what we also need to do is figure out what happens to our QXL and our QXC, the inductive VARs and the capacitive VARs. Well, the inductive VARs we're going to place down here. So my QXL is equal to 3,000 VARs. All right, now, when we look at the quadrature power sine waves, what we see is that the, when the QXL is storing energy or power in the magnetic field, the cap is actually releasing energy from the electric field. And so those two will go back and forth and oscillate back and forth, and there'll be sort of a little circuit inside our big total circuit. And they're going to kind of power each other a bit depending on their totals. All right, so the Q of XL will be down here. Our lagging VARs are down below. And our leading VARs, we're going to place up here. So our QXC is 1,500 VAR. Now, when we add them together, they sort of cancel each other out. So 1,500 VARs is going to be taken off of our 3,000 VARs. And we're going to be left with a net value or a Q net. And in this case, it's overall more inductive. We have more lagging VARs. And it's going to be 1,500 VARs in that circuit. Okay, so 3000 minus 1500, we're left with 1500 there. So that is our net value. This is the value that we want to use when we go ahead and solve for S total. All right, so P total is what it is. It's always there. We've got to solve for our Q net. That's the total that the source is going to have to provide. And then now we want to figure out what the S total is in the circuit. So my S total is down in this area here. So it kind of runs through my power a little bit. There we go. So this is my S total. All right, so the S is going to be the product, the uh, sort of Pythagorean theorem product of power total squared plus my Q net squared. Take the square root of that and we'll solve for the S total. All right, so we do that, punch those numbers in, 2,500 squared plus 1,500 squared, and I get an S total. And S is kind of defined as a total of the circuit, but my S total will be 2,900 and 15.5 VA. All right, so we've got three different units in here. We got our watts on the base for the power total. We've got the VARs on our vertical component, and our Q net is 1,500 VARs. And when we add those two together, we get the mixed value of VA, which is a volt amp, and that is our S total. Okay, so very straightforward to do power. It's the exact same as it was in series versus parallel RLC circuits. We do a little thing. We flip these upside down to rep represent where the current is, where the leading and the lagging components are. Makes a little more sense when you look at the phasers and the power diagrams together. And we just need to add up our watts directly. We need to add our lagging VARs directly and our capacitive VARs, our leading VARs directly. We solve for the difference between the two and get a Q net. And then we use power total and our Q net to get our S. And this is the S total. This is a value of how much VA the source has to put into the circuit. So this is a very important fact. 
the VA will give us at the certain voltage of the source, it'll tell us how much current is coming from the source, right? So that is S is equal to I times E. We can derive anything out of that. We have the S, we can know the voltage, we can figure out the current of this circuit. But what's important to know is that even though the source isn't providing the full 1500 bars to this cap, um, it's still there. There is still 1500 bars in this branch. And here, there are still 3000 bars in this branch they don't disappear. The burden is just taken off of the source and now there's this little circuit inside here as well as the big circuit. All right, so that's the difference. That's kind of the interesting part. So there's a little circuit and there's 3,000 bars in here and 1,500 bars in here and those don't disappear. It's just the source no longer has to provide power once this oscillation effect going back and forth starts to happen. All right, so Power in parallel, very easy. Just add up like figures, get your S total, and you're good to go. All right, so thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.